Good evening and thank you for joining us for Krem to News 10 and 10, where we give you more news in less time. Let's get started. The Spokane River is rising as mountain snow begins to melt, and that means more garbage and litter along the banks is getting swept into the river. The Spokane River Keeper says that pollution can have a serious impact, especially on wildlife. New at 10 tonight, he told Krem 2's Kyle Simchuk what's being done. Kyle? Well, last year, volunteers removed 13 tons of trash. It's really become an uphill battle, though. Riverkeeper Jerry White Jr. has seen more and more homeless camps along the bank. He says poverty has an impact on the river's health. This time of year, the Spokane River is an impressive sight. Right now, 105,000 gallons of water is running by every second. It is quite dangerous if you get up on the sides of the river. You can be swept into the trees. And the river is very, very cold right now. Spokane River Keeper Jerry White Jr. says the river is also running high right now, creeping up the banks, which are home to wildlife and people. We, we've watched kind of a social tragedy unfolding, but it's also a pretty serious impact on the river. More and more homeless camps are dotting the banks between TJ Minak and Feltz Field. Poverty has an impact. We see these camps um, with no garbage service along the edge of the river. And when we have these flows come up like this in, into where people have been living, uh, garbage and other uh, housing items get washed right in the river and then they're, they're garbage, they're, they're pollution. White has found toxic materials like chemicals, paint cans, and excessive amounts of plastic. Which breaks down into microplastic uh, and then it gets ingested by all the wildlife. The cleanup never stops. We picked up 26,000 pounds of litter just last year with over a thousand volunteers. We are certainly watching uh, the rise of people in poverty and people living along the banks of our river in our city, just as we're watching across the West Coast. The camps pose a problem with no easy solution. When conditions are safe, White likes to put service providers in boats. We'll, we'll go ashore, uh, folks from SNAP will get out, uh, offer services, see, you know, inquire as to whether services are needed. They'll get back on the boat and then we go down to the next camp. The Spokane River is an urban river. White says you can't put the blame squarely on homeless camps. Everything finds its way to the river and so we will find all kinds of litter that's not attributed to homelessness. And the Spokane Riverkeeper is always looking for volunteers to come out for a few hours on the weekends to clean up the banks. We have a link with more information online. In the newsroom, Kyle Simchuk, Krem 2 News. Kyle, thank you very much. And now to our night beat with a quick look at today's top stories. Another major road project will cause trouble for drivers who use 195 and to Spokane South Hills. Starting tomorrow, the city is closing the Hatch Ridge Broge, Bridge rather, for at least four months to replace the bridge deck. Drivers will not be able to use Hatch Road from 195 and will need to take another route from High Drive and 57th Avenue. They'll also be adding a right hand turn lane to address traffic delays on the road. It's, it's about a 30 to 40 minute difference. Uh, so for a kid that's five years old in kindergarten, that's a big deal when it comes to, you know, them already being tired as it is in kindergarten. And because the Hatch Road Bridge likely will not reopen until at least August, the Spokane Public School District said about 18 routes to five different schools have to be changed. Those schools are Lewis and Clark High School, Sacagawea Middle School, Roosevelt and Mullen Road Elementary School and the Libby Center. So coming up in just about five minutes, we will share what the district says the bus routes will now look like, at least temporarily. It's like, oh, wow, it was like supposed to be like a 30 quick, second quick little drive over here. And I was like, OK, I guess I'm going to hang out in traffic for a couple minutes and definitely a little hectic. It reminded me of Seattle, like that kind of level of traffic. Today is also the first day of road construction on Thor and Freya. Phase one of the seven phase project closed the Thor Freya eastbound exit ramp today. That ramp will stay closed through mid June. Over the next eight months, crews will be resurfacing Thor and Freya with concrete, which will hold up better in the long run compared to asphalt. Today, Freya was down to one lane, causing slow traffic from Third Avenue all the way back to Hartson. Drivers will eventually see the Thor Freya westbound exit closed at Thor and Freya, operating as a two way street to allow for crews to work on each of those roads. And construction at the historic McKinley School in the Sprague Union District could finally start this year. Renovations to the building have been at a standstill for about six years now. 
The Spokane City Council is set to approve a 12 year multifamily housing property tax exemption for the property, and this is a tool the city uses to attract developers to build more housing units in Spokane. According to the city, the McKinley Apartments will include 22 units in four buildings. Under the 12 year tax exemption agreement, 20% of the units must be set aside for affordable units, which are made available to low and moderate income tenants. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just text us the word night to 509-448-2000 and we'll send them directly to your phone. New tonight, Catholic Charities announced they'll be opening a new affordable housing community in Spokane. The new housing community named Gonzaga Family Haven will help house 73 families. The affordable housing will also provide families with on-site social services for adults, teenagers and kids. Some amenities in the housing facility include a child care facility, a health clinic, a computer lab, an indoor recreation space, a splash pad, a dog park, and also a community garden. Turning to international news tonight, after more than a month since Russia invaded Ukraine, the two nations are now restarting peace talks aimed at a ceasefire. These talks are scheduled for tomorrow morning and will last for three days in Istanbul. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says his country would consider a neutrality agreement. Ukrainian intelligence officials believe Moscow's new goal is to split their nation into two. Meantime, President Joe Biden is standing by a comment he made on Saturday night that Vladimir Putin, quote, cannot remain in power. The UN says nearly 4 million people have fled Ukraine since the war began. Florida's governor has signed a controversial bill that forbids instruction on sexual orientation and gender identity in kindergarten through third grade. The bill is dubbed by critics as the don't say gay bill. Those who oppose the law say it marginalizes LGBTQ people in Florida. Governor Ron DeSantis there said the measure is reasonable and it should be up to parents, not teachers, to bring the topics up with their children. Last week, a 14 year old boy fell to his death off an Orlando free fall amusement park ride. And today, Dollywood closed a similar ride, the Drop Line, following the teen's death in Florida. Drop Line is made by Fun Time, the same company that made that ride in Florida, according to park officials. Meanwhile, at least three people have been killed after a massive pileup on Interstate 81 in Pennsylvania. The pileup came amidst a snow squall there. Pennsylvania State Police said 50 to 60 vehicles, including tractor trailers, were involved. Several cars also caught fire in that pileup. All right, let's turn to weather here locally now in opposite scene around here as we had warm temperatures and sunshine. Let's get outside to meteorologist Jeremy Legoo right now. Jeremy, it says 51 degrees at this hour, and I want to know, does the warm weather stick around for the rest of the week? Yes, it does. And 51, Mark, feels exactly like what you think 51 should feel like at 10 o'clock at night. It's quite warm. It's lovely. I came outside just to breathe some fresh air and sit out here. 51 degrees, the light wind out of the west at just five miles per hour. Across much of the inland northwest, it's those temperatures hanging out pretty close to 50. Down to 43 already there in Sandpoint. I was trending a bit cooler this time of year at this time of night. But as you can see across the region, not much in the way of those scattered showers. And as we head into the rest of the evening, there isn't much. All of that, that's really not coming anything. So what we wind up getting is more sunshine as we get into the day tomorrow. In fact, tomorrow kind of my pick day of the week. And here's the reason why we watch temperatures drop. We fall down to near 40 tonight and then by tomorrow afternoon, we're quickly climbing and we are once again in the 60s across much of the region. Sounds good, Jeremy. Thank you very much. Well, pickleball is the fastest growing sport in America, and now it is the official state sport of Washington. Governor Jay Inslee signed the bill earlier today, making pickleball the official state sport. We know that pickleball is a great sport for all ages. Thanks, Senator Lovick. I am signing this bill and everybody play away. There we go. It combines tennis and ping pong. It is played with a paddle and a hard wiffle ball on a small tennis court. The governor was in Bainbridge Island today for the signing where pickleball was invented back in the 1960s. You know. Well, today, tulip workers in Skagit County back on the job. They walked off that job at Rosen Garden last week, demanding better pay, among other things. But Saturday night, they announced they'll pause their strike to meet with management. The Washington Bold Company says it is doing everything it can to meet the workers' needs. And that was your Kremlin News 10 at 10, where you get more news in less time. Don't go to bed just yet, though. We will share new changes to the Spokane Public Schools bus routes ahead of tomorrow's closure of the Hatch Road Bridge. Plus, later on in the broadcast, the WSU men's basketball team playing in Madison Square Garden tomorrow. What you need to know before that big game. We are back in just 90 seconds.